guys, it's Molly and today I'm going to be doing a discussion for Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. This is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. I am going to do a very short non-spoiler review. I am rating this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's not my favorite in the series but I still thought that it was actually pretty solid. To be honest, I was really expecting to not like this book because my favorite character wasn't even in it. He didn't even have a point of view and when I found out that KL was not going to have his own voice in this book, I instantly didn't really get excited to read it anymore because he was sort of like the reason that I still kept reading the series. But I'm still glad I picked this up because after a while, I realized that the series was beyond KL. The whole plot, the whole thing, everything that was going on, it was even bigger than KL or any of the characters individually. So I learned to accept that and I understood why Kaol didn't have a point of view because all of the other points of views inside the book they all in the end sort of came together but Kaol is off somewhere else and he's not active in this certain time frame so I understand that um, Sarah J Maas wouldn't want to include his um, points of views yet and I think that's why she's making a separate novella just for his story so I'm glad that she's doing something like that at least but to show my appreciation for Kale, I actually um, tabbed every time his name was mentioned. The blue tab is for Kale as well, and the pink tabs, um, they're for Sam Cortland because I still love Sam. And these two characters just need more love, I swear. In the end, I felt like rating it higher, like 4.8 like Akamov. But after thinking about all of the things that it did lack and all of its flaws, I lowered it down to 4.5 because it does have a lot of flaws. And those flaws really did bother me a little bit. But ultimately, and in general, I thought it was a very solid addition to the series. It's definitely very unexpected if you compare it to the first book in the series because you wouldn't expect Throne of Glass to go into the direction that it did in the latest book because it was it's just so different from the first book and the character, the main character, Selena, is very different from the first book and the last book. So in terms of progression, I thought that it, the series has come very very far although there are a lot of issues that I did that I do have with the series I still think that this series is still worth reading and I'm, I'm glad that I decided to continue on with the fifth book and I'm definitely gonna be reading the last book although I don't know if I'm emotionally ready especially after that ending if you're thinking about picking up Empire of Storms I think you should pick it up I think that it was a very enjoyable read um, even if some of the characters that you don't like are in it or the characters that you do like are not in it. I still think that Sarah J Maas still brought a lot of more loving characters inside and there's a lot of squad feels inside this book so I think that was quite enjoyable as well. So now I'm going to go on to the spoilery section for my discussion. Let's talk about what I didn't like about the book first. Okay, the main problem that I had with this book was how a lot of things seem to happen at the most convenient time in the and at the most perfect timing and because it happened a lot of times it really bothered me and it just seemed too well constructed if you know what I mean for example um, Lorcan and Elite happened to arrive at the place where um, Aelin and her court were battling the army of Ilkin they happened to arrive just at the perfect time like it couldn't have been days before or days after you just had to happen at that perfect moment that was one another one was when right after the Ilkin war thing and then when they were going back to their own ship that was when Ansel and her court or fleet decided to come and arrive like it couldn't have been an hour or two hours before that so they could actually help get rid of all the Ilkin it had to be at that moment and it couldn't have been like days after or a few hours after so it was just it just seemed too convenient and it's not just that. What about the part where right after Aelin was taken away by Maeve, like five minutes after that, Rowan came, like too late, but that's not the point. The fact that um, the guy from the Silent Assassins came right at that moment instead of like hours earlier or later where he could have actually, I don't know, helped out with the war, that was when he arrived. And it wasn't just him. 
It was also the prince from Wendland who came with aid as well because apparently Aelin had gotten all of this aid um, secretly. And they all arrived right at the time where the war was over, right at the time where Aelin was gone. And it just really, really bothered me because the timing was just too constructed that it, it just, I don't know, man. Another thing that sort of bothered me um, about Empire of Storms is how similar it was to A Court of Mist and Fury there are other series. Um, like the whole mating and fey system thing, it was very similar and I guess it's okay if they're sort of in the same realm but there were also other things that were very similar like uh, Rowan and Aelin secretly marrying in the end and in the end like one of the characters goes missing and they have to go rescue them I don't know about you but it sounds a lot like Akamov to me and then when they had to find a key or something like that, that was also very similar to Akamak in my opinion. So I don't know, I know it's from the same author but I just wished there was more originality at least in the terms of plot so that at least it didn't seem like it was a copy of Akamak, not really but I mean that was just at the back of my head. And also apart from some other personal problems that I had, I do not ship Rowaylin at all at all so uh during that first um sex scene it was just highly <laughs> ridiculously hilarious to read i was literally laughing because i couldn't feel it at all and i wasn't shipping them at all it was just so funny and over dramatic although i don't ship rowaylin i do think i do sort of like that um they have this bond i guess because now when alien is gone there is someone there who loves her enough to actually go after her and everything. So in that part, in that sense, I guess I'm okay with it. Okay, let's talk about the romance, the other ships that are going on. The first one is Elid and Larkin, where I really, really ship them because I don't know, I just I really looked forward to read the Elite chapters. I didn't even like Elite in Queen of Shadows, but her chapters in this one are very, very entertaining and I love their relationship, like how they're the most unlikely couple to happen in this book and they sort of did happen, but in the end, I guess that's gonna um, be more interesting in the next book. But I love how Lorcan's character developed, especially because he I don't know, I just hated him before this and now I sort of, sort of love him, I think. Yeah, and I really like Elid as a character, sort of. I mean, I don't get why everyone loves her that much, but I like how she's very fierce and how she doesn't give up in what she believes in, so yeah. And then there's Dorian and Manon. I sort of ship them, but not in the love kind of ship. I mean, I don't know, I don't even know if Manon is capable of love and Dorian, I appreciate that he still acknowledges Sorsha um, even though I didn't even like Sorsha but the fact that she, he realized that that was what broke him and he still loves her and all of that and I don't think that he actually loves Manon or is thinking about loving her I think it's more of a lust kind of thing I, in, I think but in that sense, I'm okay with it. I ship them in that sense, I guess. Like, I mean, Dorian hasn't been with a girl since like Throne of Glass, so he deserves to have like his moment. I really like both of these characters individually as well. Dorian is such a bae. I love him so much in this book. There was this one scene where he was having an argument with Aelin and I was just rooting out for him so hard and he pretty much won that argument and I'm just like, yes, Dorian. Go tell her, go tell that bitch and go burn her because even though she does burn but you know she's not always right. I'm so glad that Dorian is there to point all these flaws to um, Aelin because obviously her and her own court are always backing her up and so there's no outside voice and I really like Dorian for that. And Manon, I really loved her chapters especially in the first half of the book. They were very um, entertaining to read and I just love how that little duel with her and her grand mother and she got hurt and she was basically dying and and everything and I just love that Sarah J Mass showed us a side of her weakness and everything so it just sort of shows that she is fierce but she is um she does have her own weaknesses as well and that in a way makes her a stronger character for me so I like Manon a lot in this book and then there's Adian and Lysandra I quite liked Adian in this book but 
mostly during like the first half of the book and until the part where he confessed to Lysander that he had feelings for her and he wanted her to marry him and it was just so cute he had my heart right there I wish it sort of went somewhere but Lysander wasn't really into it yet I guess because of all of her past but Lysander was also a really really kick-ass character um, I wish we got more of her point of view it sort of breaks my heart where in the end Adian just hates Lysandra because of what Lysandra agreed to do for Aelin but I love Lysandra for being so loyal to Aelin and just the things that she was willing to do for her and for Terrison it just just warms my heart and then there were other side characters like um, Gabriel and Fenrin who I actually really really came to like I really liked Rowan's uh, cadre how they have this sort of bond so I, I think like for the first two-thirds of the book I was prepared to rate it like a four out of five but I have to say like the last third was actually pretty 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 good especially because we discovered exactly what Aelin's role in this whole series is supposed to be can we please talk about that scene at the end where Aelin was whipped because that was the scene that made me forget about all of the times that I was annoyed with Aileen and suddenly in that moment I just loved her so much because I don't know I'm, I, sh I, I didn't really like Aileen for a while especially starting from Air of Fire she was really irritating to me but from that whipping scene and seeing how she was just so strong and that scene itself was just so descriptive and it was just so emotional for me I don't know why but I, I cried, okay? I cried during that scene, I don't know why. But yeah, that was when I realized that, you know what, I love Aileen. At least for um, being so loyal to her kingdom and the things that she was willing to do for her kingdom. In that sense, I really appreciate her and I love her for that. So yeah, I cried. Please tell me what you thought about it. I'm pretty sure there were other things I was supposed to talk about, but I completely just forgot about it. So yeah, if you have any Thing that you want to agree or disagree with uh, about my opinions for Empire Songs, please just comment down below. If there are spoilers, just put any warning to say that there are going to be spoilers. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!